All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We'll begin with the, the New King James Version and also read from the, the New International Version. Dead flies putrefy the performer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. A wise man's heart, excuse me, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks wisdom, and he shows everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for conciliation uh, pacifies great offenses. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, while the rich sit in, lowly, in a lowly place. I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them, and he who splits wood may be endangered by it. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. A serpent may bite when it is not charmed, the babbler is no different. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness, and the end of his talk is raving madness. A fool, a fool also multiplies words. No man knows what it, what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? The labor of fools wearies them, for they do not even know how to go uh, to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Blessed are you, blessed are you O land, when your king is the, no, the son of nobles, and your princes feast in the at the proper time, uh, for strength and not for drunkenness. Because of laziness, the building decays, and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For, for a bird of, of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. Okay, and from the NIV. As, as, as dead flies give, a, give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. Even as fools walk along the road, they lack sense and show uh, everyone how stupid they are. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great offenses to rest. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many positions while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback while princes go on foot like slaves. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. Whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. Whoever quarries stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. If a, snake, if a snake bites before it is charmed, the charmer receives no fee. Words from the mouth of the wise are gracious, but fools are consumed by their own lips. At the, beginning, at the beginning, their words are folly. At the end, they are wicked madness, and fools multiply words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell someone else what will happen after them? The toil of fools wearies them. They do not know the way to town. Woe to the land whose king was a servant, whose princes feast in the morning. Blessed is the land whose king is of noble birth and whose princes eat at a proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. Through laziness the rafters sag, because of idle hands the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, wine makes life merry, and money is the answer for everything. Do not revile the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich in your bedroom, because a bird in the sky may carry your words, and a bird... A bird on a, and a bird on the the wing may report what you say. Okay, so we've talked about this as we've gone through, and in, in, we're in the second half of the book, which tends to be a little bit more a proverbish than the first half of the, of the book was. So we see that here, Se several proverbs regarding wisdom and folly and, and fools and things like that that we'll talk about. We'll talk about in the in the lesson today. If you read through your your, your lesson, I'm not going to reread it, but the first few paragraphs is a little story. Uh, but but the, the point is that many people live their lives from the wrong perspective, and that's kind of what we're getting into again in this in this lesson. 
that uh, because of that, then they tend to lead me- meaningless lives, and then we kind of get to the, the the vanity conclusion that we saw we've seen Solomon come to uh, many times. So he begins in the in the first section of chapter ten. Uh, he talks about uh, uh, wisdom versus folly. And our author referenced a verse we're probably all familiar with over from uh, Proverbs uh, 14, verse 1. Uh, it says, excuse me, Psalm uh, 14, verse 1. Uh, For the director of music of David, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, uh, there is no one who does good. So what makes a fool? Is a practical joker a fool? Maybe, maybe not. Right? But, but what, according to David, what makes a fool? Yeah, the, the one who says there's no God. The, the one who, who casts God aside. When, when we deny God and our, our accountability to Him as Creator, uh, then we are truly uh, acting a fool, as sometimes, uh, as sometimes we'll say. Uh, Norma? <laughs> That's a good point. And that's exactly what Solomon is talking about here. That, and to Norm's point, we've been given an instruction manual, so, so wisdom is uh, to use it, uh, use it in our lives. So in the first few verses there, he talks about, uh, first of all, when, when a fool uh, acts a fool. And this is where you get the little thing about the, if a fly, stink fly lands in the perfume, then, it, then, then it's ruined. Uh, but the point is... Um, what can one foolish mistake do to a reputation? Destroy it. Right? One foolish action can destroy a reputation. And he gives some, some examples here. Uh-oh. Some examples here from our... First of all, David. Again, we think of David, the man from God's own heart, but we always remember what? Yeah, Bathsheba, right? Bathsheba tends to come to mind just as quickly as that man after God's, uh, after God's own heart. And we see that with that one mistake, which then, and isn't it interesting we see that with David, that one mis- foolish mistake then tends to multiply, doesn't it, into more and more foolish mistakes uh, on top of it, as we did with David. And he lists uh, some modern examples here with Bill Clinton and Richard Nixon and some, some, sports, some sports guys. Uh, but, but again, these folks, instead of being remembered for the positive things that they may have done, tend to be remembered for the negative things, don't they? That, that's what stands out uh, for, the, for their lives, and that's what, what acting, acting a fool uh, can do for you. And then in the second verse, it talks about you know, the, heart of a wise, the heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool uh, to the left. And in this verse, right uh, is representing the, the right direction. The, the author makes a point that, that righteousness, it really could mean right wayness. So, so the, we can choose whether we're going to go in the, the right way or the left way or the wrong way. I, that, that's a choice we can make with either wisdom uh, or foolishness. And that's a, a decision that we, we make Constantly, don't we? We we have we, we're dealing with decisions in life in ways what we say, how we behave, uh, and we have to continually be aware of our influence, in particular, and utilizing wisdom to behave as God would want us to behave. And especially, I don't know. I guess it's true for all ages, but but if, if with younger folks, what can be the problem here? What can lead you down the the wrong path? Peer pressure, right? You want to do uh, what uh, somebody else is doing. Somebody else is doing that, so I guess I should do it too, or I should try it too. And Maybe that that falls off a little as you get older and a little little wiser, but but we have to be careful 
about looking to others as our example, don't we? We should be looking to God's Word. That, that's the right wayness. And, and looking to other Christians and solid examples we have for how we should, we should live our lives. Uh, then, then he makes a point that, 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 you know, he says, When a fool walks along the road, everyone knows it because of his reputation. And, and unfortunately, we all know people like that, don't we? We know people with a reputation. Whether it's, you know, there's different things. It could be the way they handle themselves in business. It could be the way they deal with their family. You know, the, you know, whether they're, you know, if there's, you know, I can, you know, there's probably people, there's people I can think of that when you bring their name up, people say, well, that guy's a cheater. Or this, you know, that guy's a bad, will, will take every cent you got if you let him. Th things like that. People's reputation uh, follow them. And, and we need to be careful to make sure that, that we're living uh, so that people think well of us, not negative of us, uh, if we're behaving uh, as a fool would. So, anybody have any comments on verses 1 to 3 they'd like to add? All right. So, as we continue in verses 4 through 7, uh, he talks about uh, the ironies of wisdom and, and foolishness. And, and, he, 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 and I thought the author did a, an interesting thing here that I probably wouldn't have thought of, but it's good. Uh, he says, now put employer in the face of ruler and you find great advice for dealing with a hot-headed boss. So verse 4 again, uh, if a ruler or let's say or if an employer's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great offenses to rest. That's good advice, isn't it? And is it easy? No, it's not, is it? If you've ever dealt with a hot-headed boss, or maybe a hot-headed parent, who knows, or a hot-headed friend, it, 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 what does hot-headedness tend to produce? Anger and more hot-headedness, doesn't it? One guy gets loud, the other guy gets louder, and, we get, and it just keeps, uh, can spiral out of control. But Solomon's advice to us here uh, is to, uh, to um, remain calm. What was the word the New King James used? Let's see, for, uh, it says for conciliation. It was the word it uses in the New King James, which has the, uh, you know, the, the which also means you know, this calmness. It, he points out uh, from Proverb, a couple of verses from Proverbs, uh, by patience, a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue breaks the bone. And then a soft answer uh, turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That's Proverbs 25, 15, and Proverbs 15, 1. But, but, you know, that, but don't you know, again, don't you know people that are good at this? That, that some, someone that can, what do we, we often call it, diffuse a situation? Somebody that can diffuse a, a situation, and, and it, it, is, it is utilizing wisdom and, and calmness. And, and you know, just like, step back, breathe, you know, wait a minute, let's think about it. Just those kind of words versus, it's all easy sometimes just to snap, isn't it? Somebody snaps at you, you snap right back at them. And that, that's the, probably the carnal reaction, and, and it's easy for us to do that if we don't guard ourselves uh, with wisdom uh, and it, be conscious of our behavior and how we deal, how we deal with that. I like the, in the, in the in the book. He says a marriage fact one hundred and one: the louder you talk, the less your mate will listen. Tone it down, not up. Let your words be few. Pick your moments and keep your anger in check. Pretty good advice, isn't it? You know the the louder you talk, the less your mate or probably whoever you're, you're talking to is going to is going to listen. So, again, the wisdom that Solomon is giving us is to strive for that control. That's one of the graces, right? Self-control is something we're supposed to grow in uh, as Christians and strive to apply it, strive to uh, uh, apply it uh, in our lives. Anybody have any comments on that? Or got any extra good advice to go with how to deal with something like this? Lena? Uh, I know that a lot of people here have more experience in marriage than I do, but I've learned that the quicker you shut yourself up, the quicker the argument will stop. 
And I'm not saying that I always do it. <laughs> but then eventually it applies to everything. You play sports and fans get really hot and uh, want to argue, was it a true goal, was it a true foul? But the quicker you stop, the faster the game goes on and the argument goes on. You have mm -hmm. to start with yourself. Yeah, good point. That's a good point. If, if two people are arguing and one stops, how long is the argument going to last? Clarissa? And in today's world, <clears throat> tensions are just constantly high. There's so many conflicts and disagreements just on every level of everything. Um, so it's more important for us to, to show this example <clears throat> to the world. And I mean, that's not necessarily what's taught. It's taught stand up for yourself, you know, all that kind of things. But we need to be showing the wisdom from Solomon, which is from God, um, how to, like you said, be calm, to diffuse, be humble, because um, that's what the world needs right yeah. now. Good point. And don't you think that if you demonstrate that, that people will actually start coming to you to help with situations like that? Someone that demonstrates that they can, can tone things down and diffuse situations is someone that, that's valuable for others. And again, to her point, if we can utilize that as a Christian and, and show that good influence and the influence of Christ, it may be an opportunity for us to, to teach others as well. Uh, the next point he makes is about, is about in verse 6. Fools are put in high positions which the rich, while the rich occupy low ones. I've seen slaves on horseback while princes go on foot like slaves. That never happens, does it? Again, isn't it amazing we talk about this? This was written thousands and thousands of year, years ago and how applicable uh, it, it is today. Yeah. How many times do we see people in positions they don't deserve to be there? Lots, right? And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of times we see them demonstrating that they have no business to be in that position, and they're, they're still there. And I, you know, I, I guess the, the thing to say is it, just, it is what it is. And we, we live, in the world we live in, uh, this is always going to be the way things are with, with politics and things as they are, you know, whether it's at work or in our government or, or wherever, that pe people get in positions that, that they don't deserve to be in and probably are not, not qualified uh, to be in. What can we do about that? Be the best you can. Okay, Jesse, are you going to say something? I was just thinking what Paul said in 1 Timothy 2, just pray for the pray. authority that we may lead quiet mm -hmm. peaceful lives. Yeah, pray. We pray for them and pray for ourselves with them leading us, right? I mean, that, that's sometimes that's all we can do, but that is our responsibility uh, as well to, to be praying, to be praying for things like that uh, as Christians. All right, anybody having your comments on four to seven? All right, uh, the next set of verses, and the author calls it the, the almost comical side of foolishness. With the first example being, you know, a fool lays a trap for somebody else, and what ends up happening? He falls in the trap, right? He falls in, digs a hole for somebody else to fall in, and that, that, that he falls in it. And, and that just demonstrates this, whoever this is as, as a fool, doesn't it? If they set a trap and then end up going back and falling, uh, falling into it uh, themselves. And he goes through a, a few things here. Yeah, whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. Yeah, what, what's the, the implication? What would wisdom do there? Kind of maybe check and make sure there wasn't snakes around before you start knocking, knocking, the, knocking the wall down. You know, whoever quarry stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs, uh, endangered, endangered by them. And then I think verse 10 is a really good one. What, what's verse 10 teaching us? If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Is it worth a little time to prepare and sharpen your axe before you start chopping on the tree? Yeah, that, that's what he's saying, right? That, that investing a little bit of time, using wisdom to invest some time up front to prepare is always going to make the task, whatever it is, better and go smoother. Norman? Anybody that's ever been involved in training in the corporate world or military or whatever, it always talks about sharpening your axe, sharpening your axe. 
And that's what that that's what that training idea is is the, in this particular proverb. Yeah, good point. If you have an axe to grind with your spice, your spouse, it's going to be good to, to go in with a sharp. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I won't comment on that one. <laughs> That's not, but 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 yeah, it's just that that again preparedness that wisdom has the advantage of giving success. Right? That if we will behave wise, you know, if, if we see the contradiction up above that that fools can get in positions they shouldn't be. But per, in a, at a personal level, anyway, if we apply if we apply wisdom. Uh, we, we are going to uh, see more success. And, and God is going to help us with that as we're praying and, and wanting, trying to gain wisdom uh, from Him and His Word. He talks about the, uh, the snake charmer. Uh, how much money is a snake charmer going to make if he don't snark, charm, his state, charm his snake before he starts? Not much, right? If, he, if, a, if a snake bites the customer, he's probably not going to make much money, is he? So you just again, preparedness. If you're going to... If you're going to uh, be a snake charmer, make sure you get your snakes ready before you go out and start your business up. All right, anybody have any other comments on, on that little section? Todd? The more we study through Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, I think about that God's providence, which you know we, we pray and hope that God is uh, acting in our lives and all, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. But I think so much of the way God provides is by giving us this wisdom and expecting us to apply it. And so he, he's, he's saying, you know, if you're that person who doesn't take the time to sharpen your axe, guess what? You're going to be exhausted at the end of the day. You're, you're, or, or, you know, there's so many applications of that, right, where you're just living an inefficient life, you're running out of money by the end of the month or whatever it is because you're not applying the wisdom he gave. Yeah. That's how he provides. Good point. And we kind of talked about that last time a little bit of that God is in control some people just kind of sit back and say, well, God's in control. Well, what am I supposed to do? That, that's not wise, is it? To, to Todd's point, yeah, God's in control, but God's also given us a lot of things to help us with the way we deal with situations, and we can do it wisely or foolishly. Norm, do you have another comment? I can't help but think about the in, uh, book of Acts about talking about kicking against the goads, you know, about the ox pulling against everything that's going on. It's, just, it's a lot of wasted life out there. When if you don't understand the environment and the, and the creation that you live in, and you're constantly working against it, that's what it is going against God, continually going in the opposite direction of the designer. <coughs> yeah, good point. Anybody else? All right. So in the second section here, he calls it the seven giveaways of a fool, beginning in verse twelve. Is a, is a fool proves he is a fool when? So, so number one is when he opens his mouth. Again, we know these kind of people, don't we? When they open their mouth, um, then you're, <laughs> you're just kind of maybe just shake your head. He said, a fool talks nonstop. And why not since he is an expert on everything? So uh, for, for us, the, 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 the lesson there is, and we see this elsewhere, is what's our first duty? Listen. Listen first. You, know, as I, you always say, why God gave us two ears and one mouth? You, know, you, you listen first and apply wisdom and then speak. And, and then you're going to be better off. Because, uh, again, it's, like I say, it's, it's amazing how applicable this stuff is. I think we can all relate to, to these things that Solomon, uh, that Solomon uh, gives us here. So in verse 14, he says that a fool talks unre unrealistically uh, about the future. When, and it says he's talking, thinking about visions of, of grandeur, and, and in doing that, r refuses to listen uh, to sensible and realistic advice. Again, that's foolish, isn't it? Not, not to seek advice when you need it, and then especially not to listen to advice if it's given to you, especially if you're given, if you're given uh, a wise advice. But he also makes the point at the end of number two there on page 58. Uh, it, it's always impossible to give advice to someone who already knows it all. And back to our, our first point as well. So again, what, what does that speak to us? Uh, that when, as we live our lives and we're making 
uh, decisions, then it's wise for us to seek appropriate advice, isn't it? If we, especially if there's something we're not sure about. Obviously, God's Word is a great place to go. Or Christians with more experience than we have, or that have gone through things maybe that we're about to face. Yet utilize that, that, that experience. And don't be ashamed to talk to somebody or ask for help or, or advice. As we live our lives, you know, the more help we can get, probably the better off we are. Uh, the next one he said, in ver- the third one is that he, uh, he acts without uh, common sense. From verse, uh, verse 15, it says, it says, The toil of fools wearies them, and they do not know the way to town. Yeah, that, that's a, just kind of again, the stuff we see, isn't it? That you, you, what, what, uh, the word that, that, that I would typically use, and you probably said too, is what were they thinking? What were they thinking when they did that or made that, that decision? Or, or the other way around, what was I thinking when I did that? And, uh, let's be honest, we've all been there too, right, Norma? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, and that, that's a real good point to you, as you, you know, to get to the ability to do the great things. I mean, if you're go, if you're ever going to get the point, uh, and there may be a few of us here who still remember how to do this to solve a differential equation, where you got to start with addition and subtraction. And then more, you you build up, right? It's a good point that, that we, you've got to build the basis. Uh, to get to the more difficult and grander things, and it's definitely not using common sense not to build, not to build that basis. Uh, the next one he talks about is a shirking uh, responsibility, and it goes through the example here uh, of this of a boy king who's who's obviously not what was it say they're drinking in the morning and doing, doing all these things they ought not be uh, they ought not be doing, and they're not fulfilling their uh, their responsibilities. Uh, appropriately, and we understand uh, th- this one that we, we have responsibilities as Christians, as parents, as children, uh, all the the situations and relationships that we're in that, that we have in our lives. There are responsibilities there that God has given us. Right, we have God given responsibilities that we're to carry out in our lives, and there's an expectation. That, that we do that, uh, but, but with the point being here that that's actually, that's wise. There, there's wisdom in, in being responsible as God would have us to, because again, as Norm pointed out, he's a designer. He knows what we need, and I think we, we often find that when we apply things as God would have us to, we learn and we, we grow. We actually become better people, and, and, and that's that's the goal, isn't it? To come become more and more like Christ, and as God would, would have us to. So, so when we think about the, the, the our responsibilities in life, you know, we need to ensure that we're that we're not shirking them, that we're not throwing them off, and and making you know bad decisions. It talks about the. The, the king here, uh, you know, woe to the land whose king was a servant and whose princes feast uh, in the morning. Uh, they, you know, they're doing things uh, in, the, in the wrong time. But blessed is the land whose king is of noble birth and whose princes eat at a proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. You know, it's just, have you got your priorities right? Are you doing things for the, for the right reason and carrying them out properly? Then in verse 18, yeah, it talks about that the, the fool always has an excuse. And an example here is your house. And the author kind of asks the question, if you ride through neighborhoods, can you kind of tell the difference between people just by looking at their house and their yards? And you, know, you can, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's Bob, Bob says, it, I think he's got a landscaper that lives close to him, and he's got every piece of equipment he ever had out in his front yard. Uh, you, well, well, that may say he's a landscaper, I guess, but, but he might ought to landscape his own house as well as, well as others. And we, we've all seen that. It's, it's a, 
you know, it, it's a, a back to it's a choice, right? We've got a choice on on whether to be lazy or not. In the verses through laziness, the rafters sa- sla- sag because of idle hands. The house leaks. You know, and obviously that's a physical example, but we can be lazy in spiritual matters as well, can't we? And not again carrying it out uh, or, or maintaining our spiritual house, just like we have a responsibility to maintain our, our physical house. And just like people can notice the, the shrubs growing up and the roof leaking if they come over, people can notice if our spiritual house is out of order as well. And that's something we obviously need to be aware of. And wisdom would tell us that we shouldn't be lazy when it comes to maintaining our, our spiritual house. Uh, number six is the fool lives only for the moment. And that comes back to a lot of the stuff we've been talking about of, of you know, just setting our, our priorities right. But, but th- this, this comes back, we've talked about some of these things before with the, the whole thought of not, not or, or lack of thought of anything beyond this life, doesn't it? If, if you're not considered of God, remember what a fool, we define a fool was to start with. Is someone that is put that, that, that says there is no God, that, that's not interested in, in God or, or any of the responsibilities that God has for us, then you're going to kind of naturally live for the moment, right? Because that's all there is. That there's nothing else. So if you're truly a, a fool, as, as the Bible defines it, that, that is the way you're, you're, you're probably going to live your life. As he says here to the fool, life is about nothing more than looking forward to the next big party. Again, there's no focus on uh, what God ex- God's expectations are of life. The, the focus is on well, what can I get out of it, what fun, what's the next piece of fun that, that, that I can have. And finally, I thought this was a good one. He, he calls it shooting from the hip. Let's read, look at verse 20 again. Uh, Do not revile the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich in your bedroom. Because a bird in the sky may carry your words, and a bird on the wing may report what you say. What's the wisdom in that one? Yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, again, it's one of, we've all been there. We, we, let's just be honest. We, we've all been there. And, and when we're in private with our spouse or maybe with our close friends, other people come up, and the question is, how do we talk? How do we talk about them? And would we want them to hear the things that we say when they're not around? And if we don't, we probably ought not be saying them, had we? Yeah, there, there's a lot, of le- a lot of lesson here, and in, in if, you've, if you've ever had this happen to you, it's not a pleasant thing. That if you've said something you probably ought not have said, and it gets back to the person that you, you've said it about. You know, examples I've seen in our new working environment is uh, people that are talking when they think their Zoom or whatever is on mute. Uh, another thing to be careful about. Yeah, so again, the, the, the wisdom here is what? If it ought not be said, just don't say it anywhere, right? If you're going to, whatever you say, you ought to be able to say it in front, of, in front of anybody. And ultimately, we know everything we say is in front of God, right? So let's be careful about what we speak. And I, I was thinking about this when we went through this list of, of all these things that are giveaways of a fool. And I thought that it was really ironic how, how, how would you think that this would describe the kings that followed Solomon? A lot of it point on, isn't it? What we see from the kings that came through Israel and Judah after Solomon uh, left, left the throne. I, I don't know if, that was, if there was any intention there, but I just thought it was ironic when you, when you look at how those kings behaved and pretty much all the bad ones, you could tick this list off, couldn't you? Not Norma? Yeah. I mean, th- this uh, this advice just did not get down to the, <laughs> to his family because I mean it, it started immediately right right after that. Uh, and then you know that, that's a that's a good point. Uh, wisdom is not inherited, is it? 
Wisdom is gained, uh, not, is not inherited. All right, anybody have any other comments before we get to the questions? Leah? Well, uh, it is interesting that it refers here to boy king and says, uh, uh, not to and you are mentioning kings that follow Solomon, the boy king that's mentioned in the Bible, Josiah, that uh, got uh, his kingdom when he was eight years old, was like one of the most righteous and wise kings after Solomon. And he straightened a lot of things up when he was so young. Yeah, that is a very, a very good point. Again, it kind of leads to the irony in it. Look, look at where did a good king come from? How was he eight? Was he eight when he started? Turned out to be one of the better kings, and uh, he he was taking he was taking advice, Wadi, that we talked about that we talked about earlier. That's right, Norm P. Back to the definition of a fool. Yeah, and that doesn't matter what age you are. That definition holds. So if you're eight years old and you've decided that God is, and you need to be paying attention to what God says, then you're not a fool. But if you're 50 years old and you Decided that God is, and it doesn't matter. You're a fool. Yeah. Wisdom doesn't isn't, isn't an age thing. It, it, it is. Who is God, and are you going to follow? Good point. All right, let's take a look at a few of our questions. So, the, if you if you got the book and you read through that, there was an example there from from Clarence Thomas, but. But the, 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 the question is really, discuss the impact for good that grandparents can have. Can you think of a biblical example? Timothy? Uh -huh. Abraham? Yeah. So, so what, why, how, why are grandparents good for imparting wisdom? Maybe, anyway. <laughs> Experience, have some wisdom. I mean, and don't you think those of us that are not grandparents that patience? I, I know I have a lot more patience with my grandkids than I did with my children. You know, it's just, just the way it is, I guess. I mellowed maybe over age, with age or whatever. But, 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 but the point is, again, for wisdom, for both the ends, right? As those of us that are in the, the grandparent stage, we should be giving wisdom. And those that are in the grandchild's phase should be willing to listen, right? To, to come to their grandparents for, for advice and wisdom. All right, the, the Bible tells it like it is. How does that compare to our, our day of political and moral uh, correctness? Well, we got all kinds of words for it now, like optics. You know, that's a new word, you know, the optics. And we hear a lot about uh, fake news and, and all these things. You know, what does, in our day and time, the, the, the politics want, want to mold us, don't they? They want to present things to us and influence it in, in, in ways to get them, us on their side. Right, Norma? <laughs> Uh, you're, not, you're, not looking, you're not looking for a solution. You're looking for somebody to blame, and you're the victim. And uh, and so as a result, you learn nothing. Yeah, good point. Anybody else? I think the, the element is a lot of people, when truth finally comes out by somebody that's brave enough to say it, you find a lot of people that align with it, but you find a lot of people that oppose it. Best biblical wisdom on that is probably speaking the truth in love. My mother forever told me when I was growing up, it's not what I say, it's how I say it. And, and so tact is an, an element there, an yeah. emotive. That's, that's probably a marriage point 102 right there, isn't it? The, 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 way, the, way, the way you say things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so anyway. All right, number three. How can one mistake overshadow a good reputation? I think we've already talked about that, right? It just, it just takes one, doesn't it? Just one can ruin, ruin a whole life's uh, reputation. Number four, how should we deal with those that are hot-headed? Remain calm. Don't fuel the fire. And, and again, this takes much patience and much practical application to, to, to get good at this because it's not easy. It, it, it is hard, it's hard not to defend yourself, or so, when so, especially if somebody's getting loud and they're wrong, and you know they're wrong, that, that's a tough one. Chris? It really goes 
back to pride, doesn't it? Yeah. We, we have pride. We don't want our pride, you know, to get hurt. Someone's hollering at us, or we, we want to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. A gentle answer turns away wrath. All right. Is that what you go say? Bingo. All right. All right, number five. What's the advantage of wisdom in verse 10? That was the X, the X verse. Success. It's, excuse me? Save a, lot, save a lot of time. It's back to that, uh, that preparedness thing, isn't it? That applying wisdom and, and preparing. I mean, we got Jeff's visiting today. If he shows up to a job site and has no clue what he's about to do, he, he's going to waste time. Probably the, whoever he's working for is not going to be real happy. I, he, we need to prepare. We see examples of that even in parables, right? Before you go out to war, what well, you ought to make sure of? Yeah, that you're ready, right? So anyway, uh, number six. Uh, your speech gives you a way, that's the, the reference back to, to Matthew, while accents and dialects may pinpoint our geographical origins, what, uh, what speech patterns give away whether one is wise or a fool? Sorry? Fast to speak, fast to have a fast answer, a quick response, or even better yet, talk over the other person. That'll really help you. Mm -hmm. Talk over him. It comes back to the the the, the, in, in the thinking you know it all. You got an answer for everything, no matter what conversation. You, know, you, you got the, you got an answer. Gil? Wow, wow. Indicates that foolish and don't follow God. Yeah, foul mouth. That's a good one. And that kind of a lot of times goes with the loudness, doesn't it? Get loud, start cussing, think that you're going to get your way. Yeah, the the bully kind of the bully the bully approach. Anybody think of any other ones? This one. All right, number seven. According, how does a fool show himself? According to verse eighteen. So that's the. That's the house in disorder verse. Yeah, laziness doesn't take care of, of, of business. And then I think that the, the point of that question is the fool will show himself, won't he? The fool, it, with, it doesn't take us long to figure out whether somebody is acting a fool, as we say, or acting is a wise, godly person, does it? Because you know a tree by what? By his fruit, right? And number eight. According to Proverbs 14, 7, what's the best way to deal uh, with a fool? Yeah. Stay away. Avoid him and his ways. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to help someone see wisdom, right? But why, why, do you, why is that a, a, an appropriate answer? Why would God say that? Why would we be instructed? Norm P? Very quickly to be caught up in their shenanigans and start falling into the same troubles and trying to fix their mess instead of staying out of it and saying, all right, you can handle that. And when the mess is over, I can kind of help you see where you went wrong and try to point you in the right direction. And if you don't want to do that, well, I'll just watch you spin out of control again. Yeah, that, the influence, isn't it? Watching our influence. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. We'll pick up with chapter... 11 next week.